It was just over a month ago that 49 young men and women lost their lives to a gunman at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. It would prove to be the largest mass shooting in this country's history. But would you be shocked if I told you that the same number of children and teenagers are shot across America every day? It's an underreported crisis impacting some of the most challenged communities in our country. One church in the East Village is making it their mission to bring awareness to the epidemic while paying tribute to those murdered in Orlando. Metro Focus producer William Jones has the story. It's impossible to miss. In the heart of the East Village, a sea of 100 shirts poignantly sprawled across a churchyard. Each one represents a life, a life lost to a gun last year. All New Yorkers, all 21 years old and younger. It's a story of an unspoken epidemic, a public health crisis impacting communities across the country. It's all part of National Gun Violence Awareness Month, and just days after the shirts were placed in the yard of the St. Mark's Church in the Bowery, the pastor added further tributes on the church's fence, remembering another 49 young men and women killed by a gun, this time in Orlando, Florida. I've had really good conversations about this issue about, is this in response to Orlando? Did it come first? Tourists come and say, what is this with America? Why do you love guns? In the Netherlands, we don't have this problem. Or in Belgium, we don't have this problem. Or in Australia, we don't have this problem. And I'm thinking, what is it in our culture? Um, it is glorification of, of guns. What struck me the most was how we had to keep increasing parameters to get down to a hundred people because so many people had died in 2015 so many people were are, have died 6,000 people have died in 2016 this church is good at looking at the unspoken epidemics that run around and gun violence is an unspoken epidemic Tributes were held globally for the men and women murdered in Orlando. Those deaths led to a renewed, if not eventually stagnant, debate over the issue of guns on the floor of Congress. For most of these victims, however, children as young as seven, it's often a case of stories untold, names unknown, just another statistic. According to the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence, more than 2,600 children and teenagers in America are killed by a gun every year. Put it this way, that's essentially a classroom of 15 students whose lives are surrendered to a firearm every two days in this country. The family of Jihad Jackson are among those calling for action. They lost their 16-year-old son to gun violence in December and have since gone on to become activists, campaigning for solutions in communities impacted hardest by these bullets, including their own in Jamaica, Queens. His parents recall that evening their lives forever changed. So by one o'clock, my phone rang. I answered it, it was my sister in Queens talking about, Rita, what's going on with Jahar? Why are they saying rest in peace, Jahar Jackson, on his Facebook page? So I instantly, after I hung up from her, I looked at Facebook and I saw it again. And I was going through my phone log and I saw my cousin, Kim. And I called her and asked her, Kim, please, please go over to 109 America and tell me what happened. She got over there to 109 and she called me back crying hysterically but she was standing with the officers. So she handed the phone to the officers. And the officer told me, said, Ms. Jackson, I'm sorry to inform you of this, but yes, your son Jahad Jackson is dead. Although word spread to Jahad's parents of his death after midnight, his body was found by the police, dumped on the street, wrapped in blood-stained sheets at around 11.30 that evening. It was New Year's Eve. Jahad wouldn't live to see 2016. When I got there, I see my little brother laying on the floor. And the police officer is like, well, this is a middle-aged man. I said, no, that's my 16-year-old little brother. Even that day of seeing his lifeless body lay there, and like, I didn't really feel real maybe. And so, like, today's the first day I even wore a t-shirt that says, rest in peace to Jahan. Like, and I just, I don't know why, but I just, like, I can't, my mind, like, my heart, won't allow my mind to accept it. It's been hell on earth. Yeah. It's been very, very tough.
What are the leaders doing about this? What is Congress doing? Everybody is so fixated. Like, everybody is so focusing on everything else but what's really important is that these are all children. The debate over guns in Congress since Orlando has centered upon assault weapons and access those on the government's so-called terrorist watch list have to firearms. Now those are matters somewhat separate from dealing with the urban violence we're seeing in our cities, where handguns often trafficked in from out of state are disproportionately claiming the lives of young men from minority communities. But there are indications that in this region at least some progress is being made. The data suggests that New York State actually ranks pretty highly when it comes to dealing with the issue of gun violence. There's an organization called the Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence. They crunch the numbers and they found that New York State has the third least number of deaths per capita each year. They also gave the state of New York as a whole an A-minus rating when it came to introducing gun laws. But for the families of these young men and women impacted by gun violence, killed by guns, there's still plenty more that can be done in their communities. One area gun safety activists and academics widely agree upon is the need for more research, more science, more data. That's something that happened when deaths on our roads skyrocketed in the 1960s. Federally funded programs led to in-depth studies of the crisis and that resulted in legislation, mandating seatbelts, introducing better braking systems and focusing on drunk driving. In the years ahead, deaths caused by motor vehicles would fall dramatically. But that same funding on a federal level hasn't been afforded to gun violence. For two decades now, Congress has defunded the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, otherwise known as the CDC, from studying the issue. We're now at a point for the first time in 60 years where guns and motor vehicles are killing Americans at an identical rate. The pain is real. It's real. Yeah. It, it, it's, it is so real. It's, it's gut heart-wrenching. We're lonely. We're, it's like a piece of the cog is missing. Yeah. It, it, it's like, you know, when you, when you, Thanksgiving and you cut cake or you cut the pie, you have the whole of the pie. The pie is gone. That one slice is, it, it's, it's just not there. It's empty. Since the Orlando shooting one month ago, almost 100 children and teenagers have been killed by guns in America. It's leaving families like Jihad's wondering how many more sons and daughters have to be killed before prayers and thoughts turn into more action and more solutions. For Metro Focus, I'm William Jones.